All right. Everybody got a packet and a seat? Oh. Yeah, even you, Jarecki, get a seat. <laughs> okay, good morning. Peace be with you. <laughs> JK, thank you. There's the Catholic automatic response. Uh, okay, my name is John. For those of you that don't know me, uh, Steve and I own this place together. We've been here for a couple years, and uh, Matt has been, Dr. Matt, to some of you, has been with us for pretty much the whole time. So we've come together on a couple of different things, and um, today we're going to talk about nutrition because it is very important. It's your lifeline to health, um, especially when you're working out um, at CrossFit. We do lots of high intensity workouts, so we need a lot of energy and good energy, good fuel uh, to make that happen and to get the gains and the results that we want um, through all of our efforts so we don't waste our time. So today we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff. That's why there's packets. Um, we are going to kick off our 28-day nutrition challenge, and um, Matt and Nick are going to talk a little bit more about that. So if you have any questions about CrossFit or what we do, why we do it, uh, if it's really as crazy and as dangerous as it looks on TV, no, <laughs> but yes, a little bit, um, feel free to talk to me or Steve or anybody else that uh, you see, might have seen working out um, just now. So, without further ado, Matt Fromm is going to kind of introduce all of this stuff, and then Dr. Nick will give us the meat. So, Thanks, Matt Fromm. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Let me grab this mic from oh. you. Oh. So I'm going to record yeah, this for you all so you can always reference back to it because we're going to go through a lot of great content today. So, um, thanks, John. Appreciate the, the opportunity for letting us come out. We're honored to, to help you guys in learning your nutrition. And um, just to give you a little background about what we do, uh, I own three clinics here in the, in the greater M Milwaukee area. So we have one in Waukesha, one in Brookfield, one in Hales Corners. Uh, Dr. Nick works at the Waukesha Clinic. And, um, you know, just to kind of give you a little background on Dr. Nick, he likes to do these crazy things called ultra marathons. Anyone ever heard of that before? That's like the 50 milers or whatever. And so, you know, the first one that he did, he bonked out. If anyone knows what that means, you literally hit the wall and just can't go anymore. You know, so it's walk, run, walk, run for the rest of the rest of the uh, marathon. And so he decided that he, he was, he could do better than that. And so he started to learn this ketogenic process that literally taps into your body's ability to burn fat for energy. And so his next race, um, despite the fact that he was pushing himself so hard that he had to pull over twice and puke, he actually beat his time by, what do you say, like an hour and a half? Yeah, he beat his time significantly the next time around. So um, when you tap into this fat burning process, not only can it help you lean out, but uh, it can also help you tap into energy systems and supplies that you didn't even know existed inside of your body. So. Um, the cool thing is, is that it's not just about uh, the, the fat burning. What we, what we really teach is it's about being healthy. So make sure that you've got your, your hands on one of these red folders here. That's kind of going to be your guide to what we're going to teach here today. And so if you don't have one, there's a couple laying around here, and there's a couple extras up front as well. But then I'm going to ask you to pull out this little pamphlet here because this is really going to be kind of your follow along guide um, as we're walking through the process here this morning. It also has all the rules of engagement for the 28 day challenge. So if you are serious about participating in the 28 day challenge, um, today we're going to teach you the science and the why behind, you know, the nutrition principles and why they work and how that physiologically works inside of your body. But the how to is really in this pamphlet. So it has turnkey recipes and a meal plan already set up for you. So if you walk away today saying, yeah, that all sounded great, but I don't know the first step to actually pulling that off in my life, 
this is your guide to making that happen. So um, make sure that you have one of those. I'm gonna ask you to turn directly to, I believe it's page four. Yes, page four. And um, you'll see that there's a section right there called your 28 day challenge goal. And so my challenge to you today is that by the time we leave here this morning, that you would know what your goal, what, what would you like to see out of the next 28 days? Do you, do you wanna get slimmer? Do you wanna have more energy? Do you wanna be sleeping better? Um, because you'll see through this nutritional process, there's a lot of advantages that can lean your way. So you know, by the end of today, let's figure out what your goal is gonna be over the next 28 days. I'm a firm believer in setting goals and then going after them. And so uh, I think that's just a productive way to help you to, to, to start to, to dig into this. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mindset behind this because you don't tackle this type of a nutritional change in your life unless you have the right mindset. And so I want to talk a little bit on the mindset principles for a couple minutes and then we're going to get Dr. Nick up here and he's going to start teaching you guys the nutritional part. So in our lose to win challenge, the goal really is lifestyle transformation. We actually teach five essentials of maximized living. So it is a lifestyle to maximize the efficiency of your body and to maximize the productivity of your body. So it literally taps into your genetic potential and maximizes your genetic expression for health and vitality and wellness. And that's what we teach. And I've been teaching this for years now, thousands of patients across our community. Uh, we're part of a system called Maximize Living that literally has 500 offices across the world. And so the systems that we teach, they're tried, they're true. We've done them with hundreds of thousands of patients across the world. And so, uh, you know, just a lot of credibility and science and uh, just real, real results in people behind what we do. So what are the five essentials? Number one, having the correct mindset. And that's that we get to the cause. And we're not just looking to treat symptoms. We're not looking for a quick fix. We're, we're not afraid of work. You know, and we tell patients that all the time. We can show you a system and we can show you a process, but if you don't put it to work for you, then you're not gonna get any results out of it. So we teach a, a system and a process and we're, we're willing to, to bend over backwards to share our expertise with you, but if it's not applied, then it's pretty worthless, right? And so essential number two is your nerve supply and that literally is taking care of the human frame. We know that the joints in the body um, function best when they have proper mobility and especially when it comes to the spine Roger Sperry's research, this guy dedicated over 50 years of his life to researching the, the, the health effects of proper care of the spine. His biggest finding he won a Nobel Pre uh, Peace Prize for in that he found that uh, proper nutrition to the brain, 90% of the health and nutrition to the brain comes from proper joint mobility to the spine. So literally proper care of the human frame, making sure the spine is in proper alignment, that it's free and clear of your nerve system is free and clear of any interference. It's what allows our bodies to function and heal from the inside out the way that they're designed and intended. And for some of you, that's going to be the missing link. You may have tried diet or exercise before or done a detox. And for some of you, that's going to be the part that you've probably never had addressed before. And I'm going to show you Brian here, an example in a minute, where literally he came into our office severely overweight. And the only thing that we started with him was adjusting his spine because he was so misaligned and he dropped 50 pounds just from getting properly connected the brain to the body again, right? So really powerful stuff there. Essential number three, which is probably what we're gonna be teaching on 90 plus percent of today is the nutrition. So we'll get into that here in just a minute. Um, most of you are members here at CrossFit. So you, you get essential number four, which is the fitness essential, the exercise essential. So. Uh, I'm not concerned about the majority of you here today are probably already engaging in that essential at a very high level and understand the value of that essential. And then essential number five, which is just minimizing toxicity, helping to keep toxins at a minimum level so that your cells can function and heal as best as they're possibly designed to. So that's the five essentials. Here's some of the results. This is Chris on the left, um, literally was a couple weeks out from getting a pacemaker before she came into the office. And she didn't want to have that procedure done, but she didn't know where else to turn. A friend of hers referred her into the office. We started making those five essentials lifestyle changes with her, and um, she never did have that pacemaker installed. You know, she's doing amazing now. And uh, she actually works for me on our screening team now because it's such a transformation for her. 
She quit her job as a respiratory therapist at the hospital, which she had been doing for over two decades, and she came to uh, work and volunteer for us, which is just phenomenal. And then Lynn, um, you can't see the picture really well, but the one on the left over there, um, she's got the chipmunk cheeks and just, you know, the really the, uh, chubby and overweight thing going on. She lost over 75 pounds, uh, came off three medications, and just phenomenal story. She's, she's doing amazing again. So just a couple examples of how this works. As we start to tackle the mindset, if you're going to create any real change in life, there's a certain process to go through to actually apply those changes and to, to make them as effective as possible. So first step is you got to be aware of them. You want to investigate, gain some knowledge, find out what your potential for change is. You really have to have the proper motivation, be willing to take action, and then be patient for your results. And so every change that, that, that happens, you know, whether you're trying to make a financial change, a lifestyle change, a relationship change, they all take time. So I think that's an important key to remember is that the goal here is not to get you into your Greek frame body in 28 days. Okay? I want you to see some weight. I want you to apply the principles. I want you to see some results. And you will if you do. But it's really about the lifestyle. And it's really about a way of living that's going to allow you to be well. And even Dr. Nick will tell you the fat burning nutrition that we're going to teach today, it's not fully the lifestyle plan. This really is taking things up to a really intense level. Um, but certainly we teach the overall lifestyle in our clinic. So you, could, you can learn that and, and see what that looks like. Um, you know, we have workshops. We've got a ton of resources that I'll tell you about later that you can tap into and, and do that. So we want to start with the end in mind. What's the goal? All right, what do you want things to look like when you're 60, 70, 80, 90 plus years old? Cruise ship or nursing home, right? And so when you start to evaluate that now, and we evaluate that today, and we got, you know, fairly young crowd here today, but it's never too late to start, right? Um, start with the end in mind. What do you want things to look like in the end? And then tackle it with a mindset for growth, being willing to embrace and accept challenges. How many of you heard of the book Mindset by Carolyn Dweck? Anyone read that before? Yeah, it's a really phenomenal book. Wouldn't you agree, those of you that have read it? Um, really helped to change the way that we parented our child and uh, even some of the ways that I tackled things within the office. But uh, really two ways to approach things with a success, which, which is a growth mindset, or with a fixed mindset, which really a lot of times just leads to frustration. But bottom line, you want to develop a sense of grit, an attitude that um, every failure is just a chance to learn and to grow and to continue to push through, rather than considering yourself a failure, getting frustrated, or giving up. And the reason I say that is because at the end of the day, when we go to tackle this, if you don't know why you're doing it, or if you don't have a big enough reason why you're doing it, not that losing a couple pounds is a shameful reason why, it's absolutely not, that's honorable. But at the end of the day, that may not be a big enough reason for you to push through the challenges and the resistance that it takes to truly make change in your life. Does that make sense? However, if you have a big enough why, then you'll endure almost any how. And so one of the things that you'll see on page four of your pamphlet guide as well is there's an opportunity for you to write in your big why. And I like to teach big why in a set of three. And I love the way that John opened. Um, what, peace be with you, right? <laughs> so God you know, is the first why. Why would I do this for a high, to serve a higher purpose? Why, what's the bigger purpose to this whole thing? Um, the second reason would be family. And then the third reason would be purely just for yourself, to better yourself. So the three parts of the big why, God, family, and yourself, and then you got to fill in the details and the specifics of what that means for you. Um, but I would encourage you to have a, a very solid, a solid and anchored big why, because that really does um, anchor you into a principle and a belief system that will help you to push through the tough times. And that's really what the purpose of that is. So a couple myth busters here, eating fat makes you fat. Um, that, that was a, a, a myth that was developed out of this low fat movement and Dr. Nick is just gonna crush that belief here today. But uh, eating fat does not make you fat. The truth is it's that it's your body's inability to burn fat that will cause you to store fat and become fat, right? And so the goal then is like, how do we empower our body to burn fat? And that's what we're gonna teach you here today is that principle. Another myth buster, um, weight loss is all about the scale. 
Uh, where, where, do we have an opportunity to do measurements and stuff today? Did you guys set that up? or? Okay, that's okay. I would encourage you to mark down your measurements, and there's a, there's a page in here in your resource guide. I think it's more towards the back, uh, page 27 or something, if I remember. It's got a section for your measurements. So I would do thigh measurement, arm measurement, maybe waist circumference. Um, do a measurement. They, they could probably assist you in a body fat caliper test. I think they have that as well. John says yes. Um, the truth is body composition is really more of the key. And so sometimes people will get frustrated because every week or every day they go and they look on the scale when they start something like this. And what's happening is that if you're doing workouts at CrossFit, you are building tremendous lean muscle mass, which is awesome. But the density, oh, time's up. I'm done. <laughs> Give him the hook. Give him the hook. <laughs> the point is, is that... Um, density, a, a, a pound of muscle versus a pound of fat, um, muscle is much more dense and concentrated. So you may actually be losing inches but gaining weight. Does that make sense? But you're actually leaning out and making your body healthier in the process. So I don't, I don't want you to get frustrated with just the number that's on the scale because it's really more about body composition. And that's, that's you know, what all the research says as well too. And then I mentioned the nervous system, but I just want to give you a couple examples of that as well. So this is the gentleman that I told you about, Brian, um, literally lost over 120 pounds. Um, this is after the first 75, and he took a picture, and you can see he's already half the person that he was. Um, just a ton of weight that he took off. The first 50 of it, um, he came in, he was completely overwhelmed. He's like, oh, there's these five areas that I have to tackle. I don't even know where to start. What should I do? I said, let's just start getting your body healing and functioning better first. So we started adjusting him. He had terrible spinal misalignments. If you look at his neck, if you know what you're looking at on a, on a neck x-ray, so this is, this is the neck from the side, if I were facing this wall here, and it should actually have a nice banana-shaped curve, just like you see in this one over here. He had completely lost that curve. And the problem is, is that when the bones of the spine shift too far out of alignment, because it's so intimately connected to the nerves, instead of protecting the nerves, it actually interferes with them and it can cause damage to them. And that's exactly what was happening in Brian's case. And if you look where these nerves go right here, what, what, what very important metabolic weight loss type organ sits about right here? Does anyone know? That's your thyroid, exactly. So literally the nerves going to his thyroid were getting crushed by his spine because it was so far out of alignment. And so is there any way that his thyroid could work correctly? No. So even as, despite his best efforts to diet and to exercise and do all the things that he thought were right to do, and by no means am I criticizing those. Those are important parts of the process, but he had a missing link. And so we started adjusting him, and sure enough, dropped 50 pounds, just like that, just by starting to get some of the pressure off of his nerves, getting his thyroid function back, his body was start, starting to heal. By the way, that was a subclinical thyroid issue. In other words, he had had the blood testing done. There was no thyroid issue on his blood test. So, you know, point being is that many times it doesn't become a medical dysfunction until it's progressed long enough. And you don't feel a thyroid issue, right? When do you feel a heart issue? When do you feel a cholesterol issue or blood pressure? You don't feel these things many times until it's too late. So it is important to understand how the body functions and heals. And of course, this is his post x-ray. So after we got that, functioning and healing correctly. He's doing amazing. Balancing of hormones improve the brain as a result of chiropractic adjustments, help maximize every new lifestyle change or healthy habit you adopt. Again, if your body is functioning fully from the inside out, then the nutritional changes you make, the exercise changes you make, the way you detox your body, it's just going to empower those, those, uh, all the hard work and the efforts that you're putting in those areas because your body can actually adapt to those changes at a higher level. Chiropractic adjustments help restore hormone balance and produce health favorable changes, ranging from weight loss to overall improved function in the body. And you guys saw the example of that in Brian. You know, one of the big issues for him, thyroid was disrupted. Thyroid hormones weren't working correctly. There's no way the metabolism can work correctly if that system's not functioning the way that it should. So if you know that you need help with that or if you discover after making some of the changes that you're still not hitting your goals the way that you want to, we do this in our office. You're welcome to come in and get checked. Right now, our current new patient special in our office for the month of April is just $127 for your first three visits. That includes your full exam in the office, digital posture so we can see what the structural changes are, 
nerve scan, so it shows me where the interference is on the nerves, and if we need to, we'll take x-rays. First adjustment, we'll give you a doctor's report of findings and see what we need to do to get you well. Typically, that's $210 coming in off the streets. Our new patient special for April is just $127, so feel free to take advantage of that if you need to. The other thing that we do um, beyond the, the, the testing of, of the function of the nervous system, if needed, we also do something called metabolic testing. So there's many, especially when it comes to weight loss resistance. Again, we mentioned the thyroid, but adrenal imbalance can be a huge issue as well. Neurotransmitter, digestive, systemic inflammation, or if your body's not detoxing correctly. So we actually do have nutritional profile testing that we do, and it's called metabolic. So we, we don't, you know, we test, we don't guess on this stuff. Um, if you come in and you have some functional needs, unfortunately, insurance doesn't pay for any of this stuff because it's all nutritional recommendations is what the testing tests for. So um, many times, you know, insurance doesn't pay for supplements, so they're not going to pay for the test for the supplements either. But uh, it does give us a very targeted, customized approach for your case. So um, again, if that's something that you struggle with and you need our help with that, then we're, we're here to serve you in that, in that capacity. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Dr. Nick then. He's going to start getting into the nutritional component and start equipping you guys here. And then I'll come back and circle back when he's done. And we'll talk about the logistics of the 28-day challenge and, and how to get started off. The, the challenge will officially start on Monday. Um, so you got a couple days to digest this and prep for it. And I always have those, those wise, you know, I don't want to call them a wise ass, but wise asses that go out and say, well, I'm going to eat a piece of cake and I'm going to drink a, you know, whatever and get it all out before Monday. So if that's you, then you got the weekend to do that. Hopefully you don't feel that you need to, but, uh, all right, Dr. Nick, you're up. All right. Well, thank you everybody for being here. I'm excited to, uh, to talk about this, talk about nutritional ketosis. As uh, Dr. Matt said, uh, I got interested in this because I run ultra marathons. I guess I'm one of those crazy people that, that do that. Um, so I ran 50K, 50 miles. Um, so I've ran uh, three 50 milers and two 50Ks. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hooked. But a part of that and being hooked on that and loving that and enjoying it is uh, what I'm doing nutritionally. And so when it comes to diets, you, there's a, tons of confusion when it comes out there because you hear somebody doing well on a vegetarian diet, somebody doing well on a vegan diet or high protein or high carbohydrate, high fat. Um, it can be very confusing. And I don't necessarily think that there's one specific diet that's right for everybody but then there's some that definitely outshine a lot of the others. And one of those ones that outshine all the others, I would say would be the ketogenic diet or high fat diet, which is what we're gonna talk about. And this isn't something that uh, Dr. Matt and I have thought up or anything. This is actually backed by research and there's more and more research coming out about this every day because uh, all the benefits people are, that they're learning about this so this was, there's a study done in, uh, from JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, in 2012, looking at the three popular diets. So you have a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet, you have a medium-fat, and then a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. So with the low-carbohydrate, high-fat, that's 10% from carbohydrates, 60% from fats, and then 30% from protein. So what they did is they took some measurements before they started this, and then 30 days later, they retested those. And <clears throat> with all the groups, the one that outshined every one of the, or the, out, of the or out of the three was the high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet. So when you're in, or one of the, uh, or a couple of benefits they found is that you burn the most calories. What that translates is to increase weight loss. And then also with the biggest improvement with insulin sensitivity. So when your insulin is low, that's going to decrease your inflammation. Now, inflammation is one of the biggest causes of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and a lot of the brain diseases. So by keeping your insulin low, you're going to be decreasing uh, your risks of all those. And then uh, triglyceride levels. So anybody in your, when somebody's first being exposed to the ketogenic diet, 
Of course, they freak out that it's going to cause all your measurements that we're hearing that are bad for you, your cholesterol levels, your triglyceride levels, you think they're going to go through the roof, but it actually has the opposite effect. So what they found is that with the triglyceride levels, the average number with the groups was, uh, so the low carb, high fat diet was at 66 and the low, or the low fat, so high carbohydrate was actually much, much higher. So when you eat carbohydrates, it actually raises your blood triglyceride levels. So just some cool um, uh, information from that study. Also begin to get into a ton of other benefits from doing the ketogenic diet. So what, are, what is the body's main fuel sources? And there's two main fuel sources. So it's either sugar, so glucose, or fat, or, for, or you're burning ketones. So what we're gonna be teaching you today is from going from a sugar burner to a fat burner. So if you're a sugar burner, typical thing is, so you, say you eat your lunch, and then like an hour, two hours later, you're you're ready to raid the refrigerator, raid the cupboard for some more food because you've burnt through all that sugar and now you're hungry again. So you kind of get that roller coaster ride throughout the day of being hungry and uh, being full. So when you're a fat burner, you're able to stay at a more consistent level throughout the day. And there's days where I'm busy. Um, so Wednesdays are usually one of my busiest days. So we'll have adjusting hours in the morning. Uh, uh, we'll have a radio show that we record and then adjusting hours. So I don't have really any time to eat lunch. So days like that, uh, that's one of the perks about being a fat burner because you're, I'm able to essentially go fasting throughout the whole day and then eat a big meal at supper when I'm, when I'm done with work. And I'm able to do that because I'm able to tap into your body's fat storage. And this is totally different from the standard American diet where we're, we've been taught to uh, have six to 11 servings of bread, cereal, rice, or pasta, and then some veggies and fruits, meats, yogurts, and um, dairy. And then at the very top that you're supposed to have sparingly is the fats and oils. Now with the ketogenic diet, you're essentially tipping this upside down and you're gonna be consuming about 70% fat 20% protein, and then 10% carbohydrates. So we're gonna be diving through uh, what that looks like. Uh, so again, with the, when you're eating that, the traditional diet, the high carbohydrate diet, what that does is that will spike your blood sugar, which when you spike your blood sugar, that's gonna increase your insulin levels, which, is gonna mean, which means that you're gonna be decreasing your ability to burn fat, and then which means that you're gonna be increasing your fat storage. So some of you may be thinking, okay, I'm not supposed to eat sugar. What am I supposed to sweeten things with? There's four really good um, options as far as sweeteners. So you have stevia, which we have an example of here. Stevetta is one of my favorites, just because uh, with a lot of stevias, you can get a bitter aftertaste. This one is, um, there's two different types of, of components of stevia, and it's got the component that doesn't have the bitter aftertaste. Um, and then you have what are called sugar alcohols. You have xylitol, or you have erythritol. So xylosweet, swerve, those are two good brands to look for. Some people do not do very well with the sugar alcohols. Just the way that it's digested, it causes upset stomach with some people. Um, I, we use a lot of uh, xylitol for baking. I've never had an issue with it, but again, some people um, are not a fan. Oh, with the stevia, stevia comes from an herb, so it's actually coming from a plant. And stevia, if you've never used it before, it's about 200 times sweeter than sugar. So a little bit goes a long way. So start slow. We actually do have a, a stevia conversion chart, stevia compared to sugar. Uh, we have that conversion chart on our website. Um, and then uh, the last one is called monk fruit, or you may hear it referred to as lo hung gua. So this is another great alternative uh, for sweetening things with. So as Dr. Matt mentioned, fat's kind of gotten a bad rap. Uh, all started with Ansel Keys, who did some research for University of Minnesota back in the 50s, 60s, and for some reason the uh, the government 
took that information and ran with it because uh, during this time, what happened was that the butter and meat consumption dropped uh, by 50%. Margarine consumption rose 400%. So does anybody uh, know what margarine is one molecule away from? Plastic, okay. There's a lot of people know that's good. Um, so we definitely want to stay away from margarine. Does anybody know what color margarine is before they actually add the, some food, dye, food dyes to it? It's kind of a grayish color. So not very appealing to people. So they had to add some food coloring in there to, to make it more, uh, more palatable. Um, and when they switch from taking out the fat, saturated fats, uh, heart, disease, heart disease dramatically rose during this time. And for, there's a, um, for the first time very recently, the FDA had switched their, uh, their stance on the whole fat, uh, staying away from fat. They switched it saying that saturated fat fats are good for you, but what, was the first, what would they put a regulation on uh, the consumption of now that they've uh, switched their stance on fat? Does anybody know that one? So they, they put some regulations on sugar, on your sugar intake, because they, what they found is that it's not fat that's a problem. It's the sugar, the carbohydrates. That's the part that's uh, really going to be affecting the heart disease and all, all the other disease processes. So there's definitely a difference uh, when it comes to fat. There's bad fats. There's good fat. So I want to teach you with the fats that you want to be consuming when you're doing the, the ketogenic diet. So the bad fats that you want to be staying away from, these are the hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. So when you're looking at labels, those are the, some of the key buzzwords you want to look for so that you want to, if you see those on there, put it back on the shelf. So if you're seeing hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated, that means it's a, a bad fat, so hydro, or a, a trans fat essentially. Um, so this is going to be the vegetable oils, so cottonseed oil, soybean oil, um, and then Staying away from margarine, as we mentioned, it's a synthetic, it's one molecule away from plastic. And one of the things that makes these oils rancid is that they've been treated with either high chemical or a lot of chemicals or high temperature, which means that they've then gone to a rancid oil, means that our body is not able to digest those properly. So corn oil, canola oil, um, these are uh, more oils you want to stay away from. And one of the tricky marketing things that uh, food companies will do is they know that if something uh, has less than 500 milligrams of trans fat, they're able to market it as trans fat free. So what do they do with the serving sizes? They decrease the serving sizes so they're under that mark. So then they can have that fancy label on the front of the box that says trans fat free. So just some, uh, something to be aware of, because even though it may say trans fat free, more than likely it's going to have some in there. And so the good fats that we want to be putting in our bodies. So uh, extra virgin olive oil, uh, avocados, avocado oils, coconut, coconut oils. So avocado, coconut oil, those are two really good oils to cook with because they have a high temperature, high smoke point. So they're not going to be going rancid. So if you're cooking with the oil and all of a sudden it starts smoking, that means the oil's gone bad. You need to dump it out and start over, decrease the temperature a little bit. Um, raw nuts and seeds and oils, uh, MCT oil, we'll talk a little bit about that in, uh, on the next slide. Butter, one of my daughters, I've got a four-year-old daughter, one of her favorite things, favorite snacks is butter. She'll go to the fridge, pull out the pack of Kerrygold, grab a spoon and sit down and start eating it. <laughs> and I'm okay with this because it is a good healthy fat. Uh, raw cheeses and yogurts, grass-fed meats, eggs, whole milk. So just getting the whole milk versus the skim milk, because uh, when you with skim milk, they're when you take out all the fats, they have to add sugars in there to make it taste taste good. So you want to be consuming the whole milk, whole milk yogurts, uh, fatty fishes, uh, fish. So Pacific or wild-caught salmon. You want to be staying away from the Atlantic salmon. If you put those two next to each other, you'll see a dramatic color difference between the wild caught and the Atlantic salmon because Atlantic salmon is typically farm raised and they actually have to add food coloring 
to the farm salmon to actually make it look somewhat close and still not even close at all. So uh, small fish like sardines, uh, really good sources of fat and protein. Um, so these are things that we want to be consuming lots of when it comes to eating a high fat diet. Um, so MCT oil, has anybody used MCT oil before? So a couple people. Uh, so MCT oil, what that means is when, uh, so this is from coconut oil. So you have large chain fats, medium chain fats, and small chain fats. So this is essentially just move, removing the, the medium chain fats. And why the medium chain fats is they are very easily digested. And uh, specifically the eight and 10 chain, eight chains are the best because body digests these very easily. So a smaller chain which means less to digest. So very quick burst of energy uh, helps to maintain your body to be a fat burner because you're getting good fats in the body. Helps to control appetite. Good eating lots of good healthy fats are going to help keep you full throughout the day. Uh, amazing for your brain and your nervous system. So your your nervous system is about 70% fat. So we want to be getting good fats in the diet to support that. Um, one of the things that this became, or the ketogenic diet first became popular with was uh, with brain diseases, epilepsy, seizures, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, because when you have, or the brain and nervous system are in these disease states, they do not do well with, with consuming carbohydrates. The ketones are very clean sources of energy, and then uh, you're able to utilize, the brain's able to utilize these even though there's these disease processes going on. Uh, great fats for people who have gallbladder issues or have had their gallbladders removed. Um, uh, MCTs are digested in the stomach, or excuse me, by the liver versus the stomach and versus the intestines. So it bypasses that whole system, it's digested by the liver. So uh, able to digest them a lot easier and a lot faster even. And uh, so if, if you've never uh, never uh, eaten the uh, MCT oil before and your body's not used to it, you want to start slow because if you consume a little bit too much, you can have the uh, phenomenon I refer to as disaster pants. Uh, <laughs> so it, it uh, can get the balls moving if you're, if you're consuming too much too quick. So start slow with MCT oils. Uh, and then you can start to, to build up as your body uh, ramps up the digestive enzymes to digest them. So how does keto, the ketogenic diet work in, uh, in, an, in a nutshell? So once you start restricting your carbohydrates, your body has what are called the glycogen storage. That's your sugar storage. So once the body burns through those, the body wants to stay alive. So what it, it does, it's smart and starts breaking down uh, our large source of fatty acids that we have throughout our body. So the liver is what breaks down the and does the fatty acid oxidation, so breaks down the fatty acids into ketones, which is going to produce energy for your muscles, energy for the brain. And the really cool thing with this is it's going to spare your muscle tissue and you're going to be able to burn fat. Some other benefits of the ketogenic diet it's going to fix your uh, people who have the real intense sugar cravings. Um, so uh, sugar, if you've never heard of, heard this before, uh, it's, it stimulates the same receptors in the brain as drugs do. So like uh, cocaine stimulates the same receptors. So it's, it's as addictive as drugs. So uh, when you're, you stop, uh, stop consuming those, putting good fats in the body. It's going to help a ton with the sugar cravings. Um, it's going to help with the lack of hunger, as I mentioned earlier. It's going to help with lowering lots of the, the, the big blood markers people are always looking at. It's going to help with lowering your blood pressure, lowering cholesterol, triglycerides, drop your blood sugar and insulin, decrease with stiffness in pain in the joints. So we did the, uh, this same challenge in January with a lot of our patients. And one of our patients, Steve, uh, he did the challenge and he went at the challenge full bore. And by the end of the challenge, he lost 35 pounds. He's now over 50 pounds. He kept going after the 28-day challenge. 
And he started this on Monday, came in for his adjustment on Thursday, and he already noticed a dramatic difference in the stiffness and pain in his joints. So uh, uh, if you, one of the things that happens when we're over-consuming grains, sugars, it causes systemic inflammation throughout the body. So we're gonna be going to a lot to joints. So again, when you start removing that, uh, gonna be a big, big difference as far as stiffness and pain in the joints. Uh, clear thinking, this is one of the things I really notice. I mean, I've never been very heavy before, so I didn't really, wasn't doing the ketogenic diet to, to lose weight. But the one thing that I noticed was the, the clarity and thinking, just the way that my brain was able to start functioning. Uh, dramatic difference, better sleep, and of course, the main thing that we're talking about the ketogenic diet for is it's amazing for weight loss. And <clears throat> some people, when they hear the term ketosis, they get it confused with the term ke diabetic ketoacidosis. And um, these are important things to understand. There's a big difference between diabetic ketoacidosis and nutritional ketosis. And I like to think of diabetic ketoacidosis to an uncontrollable forest fire versus ketosis, which is a contained campfire. So ketoacidosis is when the, somebody doesn't get enough insulin levels. So this is type one diabetics that don't get enough insulin. And all of a sudden your, the body starts going into freak out mode because it's not getting the sugar that it's needs. So it starts going the total opposite way and overproducing ketones in the body which is not a good thing. So versus ketosis, where it's a very controlled uh, level of ketones in the body. And uh, I already kind of mentioned this as far as uh, one of the reasons why people with brain diseases, different things do really well with uh, ketosis is because it is a very clean energy source. So think of ketosis as a natural gas. Think of burning sugars, glucose as coal or wood, very dirty burning. And um, in the body, it takes about 23 steps for glucose to go to ATP, which is our body's main energy source for the mitochondria, versus three steps for the body to produce, go from fatty acids to, uh, to ATP. So very fast in comparison, very clean. So what does your body prefer to, to burn? Actually prefers ketones. And one, again, one of the things that got me first interested in the ketogenic diet is the, the ability to tap into our body's almost unlimited supply of energy. So even if somebody has super low body fat percentage, say five, six percent, you still have anywhere from 30,000 to 50,000 I've, I've heard up to of calories that we're able to burn from our fat. So a good analogy for this is say we're driving this gas truck down the road and we have this huge gas tank on our back and then we have the, the truck's small gas tank and all of a sudden we're driving along, we run out of gas. We've burned through all the gas in the truck. And when you're a sugar burner, you're not able to tap into this huge gas tank storage and keep going. You're, you're stuck, you're dead in the water, you're bonking, you're hitting the wall um, in, the, in the athletic world. So when we're in ketosis, we're essentially able to hook up this huge tank of energy onto uh, the motor of this truck and we're able to keep going for much longer periods of time and we don't need to be consuming lots and lots of uh, the goos, the gels, and different things that a lot of the runners use to keep that glucose level up. So um, the big thing is, is with ketosis, we're able to tap into that energy source. We're able to burn fat as energy. So how do you know if you're actually in ketosis or not? If you're somebody who uh, wants to be very specific, if you're uh, kind of nerdy like me and really want to know, you can actually get a glucose meter or glucose meter that also does uh, ketones. So this, this uh, Precision Extra, this is a way that you can actually measure your ketone levels and even your blood sugar levels. Now the, the, the ketone strips, they can be a little spendy, 
it, one strip is anywhere from two to four dollars so it's not the cheapest thing there's a couple other ways there's actually a um, uh, breath meter that you can blow in and it will it'll analyze your your ketone levels it's not co maybe quite as accurate as the blood uh, but it gets pretty close there's also some ketone strips that you can pee on but those aren't very accurate uh, it doesn't really tell what the the one the the level that you're looking at in the blood is a, a beta hydroxybutyrate that's the main ketone there's three types of ketones there's acetone uh, which you're going to be reading in the the breath and then there's acetoacetate which you're going to be le measuring in the urine um, the beta hydroxybutyrate that's the one that we really want to know and we want to see those levels anywhere from 0.5 to 5. So once you hit that 0.5, that's when you're technically into nutritional ketosis. And then you want that upper range to be in 5. The, the ideal range that you want to be in is around the 3. So 1.5 to 3. Um, and <clears throat> with this, there are some ways that you can actually take a look at your your glucose levels and actually get a fairly good idea that you're in ketosis so what i've read is that if your glucose levels are down in the 50 60 range that's going to technically mean that you're in ketosis it will vary a little bit person to person but it's a little bit cheaper way to check and see if you're in ketosis or not so 50 60 is what you want to see the the blood glucose um, measured at um, so the keto flu, has anybody ever heard of the keto flu or keto storm? And what this means, it's not the actual flu, it's not that you're actually sick, it's just the transition from you're training your body from being a sugar burner to the fat burner. And your body is going through the adaptation process of using ketones instead of sugar. And during this time, you may experience some fatigue, some headaches, some coughing, some sniffles, irritability, nausea. It almost feels like you're sick, but it's just the body adapting to uh, being, a, uh, being in ketosis. And some things that you can do to kind of make that transition a lot easier is by using some digestive enzymes. So again, your body's getting used to increased fats or digesting a lot more fats. So taking some digestive enzymes, that can help a lot. Making sure you're increasing your water intake because a body does something interesting when you're going into ketosis versus when you're not. When you're eating lots of refined carbohydrates, your kidneys will retain your sodium and also will hold water. But once you go into ketosis, for some reason it dumps the water, dumps the, the sodium. So these are so we want to make sure that we're increasing our water and increasing our electrolytes. So a couple ways we can be getting those electrolytes is by Himalayan sea salt. Um, and this is again one of those controversial topics with salt that we should be taking it out of our diet. But when you hear the negative side of salt, that's talking about the traditional highly refined table salt, not Himalayan sea salt, which is loaded with 80 plus trace minerals um, that our bodies need. So uh, it's not going to have that same detrimental effect as the traditional table salt. So you can consume up to two teaspoons. So if you start feeling that you're getting the brain fog, you start getting maybe even some dizziness, headaches, um, that's a sign that you're, you need to increase your minerals. So you can either uh, just put a little in your hand, dump it down, wash it with some water, or even put it in some water. Of course, use it when you're cooking. So there's many different ways you can get that in. Uh, you can also get those minerals, uh, vitamins and minerals from like a multivitamin or even uh, one of my favorite ways too is with the, uh, with like a greens powder. Again, you're going to be getting tons of trace minerals and vitamins from that. So these are some ways that you can kind of get through that, that keto flu, keto storm time period. So this is typically the first week, so five to seven days that, that this transition will be happening. Um, and then when it comes to the actual ketogenic diet, uh, what I found is that you want to do more of what's called a cyclical based ketogenic diet. You don't want to be fully in ketosis all the time. Uh, uh, body again does some amazing things or crazy things 
Um, so you get about four weeks in doing a full, full on ketogenic diet and you can start having some, some hormone issues, particularly thyroid levels start getting affected. And one way you can prevent that from happening is by doing the cyclical based ketogenic diet. So what that means is that for six days out of the week, you're doing the strict ketogenic diet. Then for one day, you're going to increase your carbohydrate or protein loads. And why, why can you increase your, your protein loads and affect your carbohydrates is because, uh, and this is one of the things that people need to be aware of too, is because uh, a lot of times when you start removing carbohydrates, a lot of people will tend to overdo the protein and won't be able to lose weight is because your body does what's called gluconeogenesis is when you overconsume protein, your body starts turning that back into sugar. So that's why um, the, like the Atkins diet, um, I think Dr. Atkins was on the right track with that diet where he was, he was realizing we needed to start avoiding the carbohydrates or minimizing them. But I think he just had the proteins and, and fats mixed up where he was big on increasing the fat, or excuse me, increasing the protein, but uh, just moderately increasing the fat. So body does gluconeogenesis. So you can actually increase your protein and still increase your, your total carbohydrates throughout the day through gluconeogenesis. So on a typical day with ketosis, you're gonna be consuming anywhere from 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrate. But on the refeeding day, you're going to be increasing that to 100, 125, even up to like 150. So, uh, so like athletes. So day, uh, pick a day that's going to be your most intense uh, athletic day. This is a good day to do your refeeding. Um, so like days that I'm going out and doing my long run, that's my refeeding day. Um, just because uh, athletes in general can actually get away with a little bit more carbohydrate just from the athletic activity. So even like a, a workout day, so like a CrossFit workout, you can probably get away with a little bit more than even 50 grams. Um, so they're a little bit more leeway with, the, with athletes. Um, so proteins, what we wanna be eating. So we wanna be getting some good quality. And this is one of the things that I always tell people to start with when they're starting to make changes. Uh, a lot of people want to start buying the organic veggies and that's something that's really good to do down the line. But if you're going to be putting your, your, your money uh, in a place that's going to have the biggest bang for your buck in terms of quality and less toxicity is, is uh, putting that money towards getting some good quality meats and dairy. So grass fed, grass finished meat, uh, poultry, so chicken, turkey, getting some good quality eggs, a uh, fish, again, going with the wild caught versus the Atlantic farm fish, and then uh, protein powders, getting 100% uh, grass-fed whey, so from grass-fed cows. Uh, carbohydrates, so there's, there's uh, definitely better ones than others on the, carbo or on the, the ketogenic diet, and that's kind of a big misconception with the ketogenic diet is with the carbohydrates, you think you're not going to be getting in lots of veggies or, or fruits, but you want to look at the, the fiber content of the, the, uh, the vegetables because fiber isn't broken down into the carbohydrates. Body isn't breaking those down. So it takes a little bit of research with this one, um, but what you can do is you can look at the carbohydrate breakdown of the vegetables and you want to look at the the um, fiber versus the non-fiber component. So the non-fiber component is the one that's gonna be counting towards that 50 grams per day. It's not the, the fibrous part, because again, the body's not gonna be breaking that down into the, into the carbohydrates. So you wanna stay away from the, a lot of the root vegetables. Those are good ones for the refeeding day, just because they're gonna have a higher sugar content, higher carb count. Um, so this is a, a chart that's in the book. Um, and then, so if you're doing the ketogenic diet to lose weight and you either aren't losing weight like you think you should be, or you lose weight for a while and then all of a sudden you stop, there's a couple things that you want to look at. So, uh, first one is you may not be eating enough fat. You may be eating too much protein. Like I mentioned, the gluconeogenesis, 
you're eating too many carbohydrates, you're either exercising too much or either not enough, um, not drinking enough water, and you may be over consuming your calories per day. So uh, one of the cool things that we did for you is we tried to make it as easy as possible with this booklet. And <clears throat> with this booklet, it goes through a meal plan for you. So it's basically all you have to do is go to the grocery store and pick up your groceries and all your recipes are already planned out for you. So tried to make it as easy as possible for you. And this is something I wish I would have had when I was first starting the ketogenic diet because I had to start from scratch and didn't know what to eat, what not to eat. So this makes it super easy for you. Um, and one thing that to be aware of, so say there's gonna, obviously going to be a little bit different depending on your body size. If you're 100 pounds versus 200 pounds, you want to modify uh, what we have in there a little bit. So obviously if you're 200 pounds, you can eat a little bit more. 100 pounds you may want to cut back a little bit so just some things to to be aware of um, so we have the booklet for you some other good resources for you there's a book called keto clarity by jimmy moore has anybody heard of jimmy moore before he's super super knowledgeable when it comes to the ketogenic diet he's got a podcast he's got a couple books um, and uh, jimmy moore how he got interested in the ketogenic diet is he used to be over 400 pounds and he started the ketogenic diet to lose weight. He's lost over 180 pounds on the ketogenic diet. So you can lose tons of weight on this. Um, and so Keto Clarity, that's an excellent book. Kind of again, goes to the why and how it works. The, there's also uh, one of the books that he co-authored is uh, the Ketogenic Cookbook. So some of the uh, meal ideas are from this book. So. Uh, obviously a lot more recipes in there uh, if you're needing more resources. So who wants to take their fat burning to another level? I'm not talking about getting a campfire going in here and laying over that and hoping to uh, burn some more calories. I do not recommend that. Um, so the next thing I'm talking about is intermittent fasting. Has anybody ever heard of intermittent fasting or done intermittent fasting? Okay, so a few people. So intermittent fasting, very simply, is restricting the window in which you're eating your calories. So you're restricting that to a six to eight hour window. The other time, that's when you're in your fasted state. And the key, key, key thing is with this is you're eating the same amount of calories. A lot of times people will over restrict, restrict their calories or not eat enough and the body starts going into starvation mode, which will have the opposite effect, starts holding on to things, and you, again, won't be able to keep burning fat and burning uh, or losing weight. So what does that look like on a daily basis? So we'll start with the time that we eat. So say you eat your first meal at uh, 12 noon. So that means that you have till six o'clock, say, with a six hour window of eating foods, so 12 to 6, you're eating your, say, 2,000 calories. You're getting that in during that time. Then after 6 p.m., that's when you start your fast. So whether you're um, going to bed at 9, 10, or 11, you may have three to five hours where you're in the fasted state at night. Big bulk of the fasting time is while you sleep, which makes it super easy. You don't have all the temptations of the fridge and all the food around. So it makes it a lot easier. The only real change that you're going to be doing with intermittent fasting is you're essentially going to be skipping your breakfast. So if you think about the word breakfast, breakfast means when you break your fast. So um, when you break your fast with breakfast, um, that can be 12 noon. So skipping your, skipping your uh, breakfast is essentially what intermittent fasting it breaks down to. Um, so there, I just learned about this uh, as a way to see what your body can handle in terms of fasting because when you're again you're you're getting adapted to the ketogenic way of, of burning uh, ketones as energy um, what you can do is actually monitor your blood glucose levels to see if it, you do better with a 12-hour fast or 16 or 18 whatever that looks like so what you can do is you can monitor your blood glucose levels. Uh, so when you wake up in the morning, do the finger prick, take your uh, blood glucose levels. 
and you get your baseline. And then what you'll notice is as you're going throughout the morning is the levels will start to decrease. So say when you get up, it was at 95, and then you'll notice it'll drop down to 85, 75, get into the 50, 60 range, because again, that's that, that ketosis sweet spot when it comes to glucose levels. And then what you'll notice is that all of a sudden it starts to rise again. So you want to make note of that time when it starts to rise. So again, what that means is that your body starts going into that gluconeogenesis mode, starts to break down your muscle to start producing glucose uh, so your body can keep going. Because again, it's not ready for burning ketones yet. So that's a way that you can find out what your body can handle in terms of intermittent fasting, how long you can keep that fasting state going. Um, when you're doing intermittent fasting, again, I'd, I'd recommend doing the ketogenic diet. A lot of times people get into the, the part where they want to start eating their food, the, the 68 hour window, and they want to start binging on whatever's around them. It doesn't give you the, the ability to go out and binge on pizza or, or pasta. You're gonna have the uh, you're not gonna have the same benefits uh, with the that you're gonna get with the intermittent fasting if you're going out and binging on the the junk food. So again, sticking with the the ketogenic type diet. Um, so you can actually kind of as uh, uh, has anybody tried the bulletproof coffee before? Yeah, I had some this morning. Um, I love it. So this is kind of a way as as this is made popular by Dave Asprey. Um, as he refers to it as biohacking. So you a way to biohack your way to still getting some calories in, but still staying in that fasted state. So with Bulletproof Coffee, you're brewing up some coffee. If you're not a coffee person, you can do some tea. You wanna get some good or quality organic coffee um, because coffee is one of the most heavily pesticide sprayed things. So uh, spend the extra couple bucks and get some organic. Then you're gonna put some butter in there. So again, my daughter's favorite thing, getting some Kerrygold butter in there or some Organic Valley. Those are two good uh, brand options. And then you're gonna be putting a little MCT oil. If you don't have MCT, you can use some coconut oil. And then, so that's the base. So coffee, butter, MCT oil, and then you're gonna throw that in the blender. You can also throw in some stevia or xylitol or even some cocoa powder, make it a mocha. Um, I, the way I usually do it, I'll do coffee, butter, MCT oil, and I'll do some uh, French vanilla stevia drops. So almost like a French vanilla latte then. So the key with that, again, throwing it in the blender. I've tried to do it in the shaker bottle. Does not work at all. The, the fats come to the top and it's not pleasant to drink at all. So spend the extra minute and blend it. I like using an immersion blender I put it in the, the big blenders before, but the heat just trashes the blenders, the, the containers. So immersion blender is what I use. So put the coffee and everything into a quart size jar and use an immersion blender, blend it for like 30 seconds and it's ready to go. And it's a lot easier to clean up too than the, the big blenders. Um, if you're not a coffee person, uh, one of the other things that we'll recommend and this is usually what I'll do a lot of workout days. So I also do CrossFit workouts uh, three to four days a week uh, on top of doing some running. So after a workout, I'll do a scoop of protein, scoop of greens, some MCT oil. So you're getting some protein to, to rebuild the muscles from the workout. You're getting some good quality nutrients from uh, vitamins and minerals from the greens, and you're getting the good benefits from the MCT oil put some water in a blender bottle with everything, shake it up and you're ready to go. This is another thing that I'll use uh, as well as a meal replacer. So some of the days too, where I was talking about where I'm busy, some days I'll be prepared and have that ready for me. So I just have some, or dump some water in there. I usually keep the MCT oil separate until I'm ready to mix everything together. Um, and super, super filling. You can Again, take this to another level and throw some chia seeds in there and that makes it even more filling. So chia seeds, if you've never had those before, they absorb the water, good source of fiber and almost become uh, 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 gelatil, gelatilized. So you wanna make sure that when you put them in, you shake it up right away. Otherwise you'll have a big blob of chia seeds in there. 
um, and by the time you're done, you open it up and have to eat it. Uh, so it's better to uh, take the extra time and shake it right away a couple times. So some of the benefits of intermittent fasting. So this again is going to be another key component of retraining your body from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. Um, also, it's going to help with decreasing your, your hunger cravings, helps with regulating blood sugars, resets hormones, a couple of the big ones, the, the hunger hormones, so leptin and ghrelin, those are ones that get out of whack, oh, out of whack when we are eating lots of meals throughout the day, eating lots of refined carbohydrates. So leptin is the, your fat burning hormone as well as the one that tells you that you're full. Grenlin is a hormone that tells you when you're hungry. So those get out of whack when you're, when you're uh, uh, eating the standard American diet. Uh, the other big thing with the, the intermittent fasting is it allows your gut to heal. Now, it seems like almost an epidemic thing that people are having all kinds of gut issues nowadays. So this is one of the ways that you can work on healing your gut. So your gut can only heal when it's not digesting. So if you're constantly eating, constantly snacking throughout the day, your gut doesn't have a chance to heal itself. So intermittent fasting, you're getting that 16 to 18 hour window where you're gonna be able to work on healing your gut. Um, and then the last big benefit, it's gonna help with losing weight. So um, one of the other things that I just came across is, um, uh, one thing to be aware of is if you're on a statin medication, one of the things that you won't be able to get into is ketosis. Because what the, uh, there's a enzyme, it's called HMC enzyme reductase. That's the part that the statin medication will block because that blocks the production of cholesterol metabol or cholesterol production in the liver, also prevents uh, coenzyme Q10 from being produced. So if you're on a statin medication, that's one of the things that we always recommend people being on is uh, coenzyme Q10. But the other thing that that prevents from happening is a production of ketones. So if you're on a statin medication, you actually can't get into ketosis because your body can't produce ketones. So that's just one little sidebar tidbit. So uh, what I'm going to have is Matt come up and he's going to wrap things up for you. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't feel like the the mouth on the fire hydrant with everything that I went through. If there, again, if there's any questions, um, we'll be sticking around to, to answer any of those. But the big thing is that the book is gonna be huge for you all because that's gonna walk you through what you're eating on a daily basis. And that's always the biggest question people have anytime they're changing their diet is what the heck do I eat now? So it makes it super, super easy for you. So. Yeah, give Dr. Nick a round of applause. Thanks, Doc. Some awesome content there, and it, it can seem uh, a little overwhelming if it's the first time you've been exposed to it, but we've, we've tried to break it down into the simplest format possible for you with a 30-page you know, guide here or whatever the actual page count is. So um, as you can see, it is a very advanced hack into your physiology. I, I like that terminology. So again, if you're on cholesterol medications or if you're otherwise not sure if you're healthy enough to go after something like this, um, please talk to your doctor or come and talk to one of us so we can make sure that it is a, a doctor guided process for you. Um, the most important thing to us is that it's done safely and that you're actually going to get the results from it if you are going to tackle it and that you're not going to harm yourself in any way. So. Um, other than that, remember it is a, a process of getting healthy. We uh, not just recommend the nutritional protocols, but the five essentials process. So if you know that you need more doctor guided help, please take advantage of us. Um, Carrie's in the very back. Carrie, go ahead and wave at everyone. Um, Carrie's here to help you all with any uh, office signups if there's anyone that does need to take advantage of that new patient special. Also, we do have a very limited supply of product up here. So if you want to get on the gun right away and you know that there's stuff that you're going to need, then you could take advantage of that. That'll be the orange sheet in your folder. We're actually just going to be giving you guys a discount for those. So um, you get them at a much reduced price to, to start the process off. So if you want to take advantage of that, I know that we have the, the top shelf ingredients and products that we offer in our office, which 
You're not going to find it at GNC or a Walmart or something like that. So if you're really looking to tackle this and get great results, then um, you know the, the nutrition is a worthwhile investment for you. I love this quote by Jim Rohn. You're the average of five people you spend the most time with. Um, you know, I love the fact that, that John and, and Stephen put this on so that you guys can just better yourselves. And I believe that tackling a challenge like this and building the culture that they're creating here at their gym is an extremely valuable piece of our community. And so I just wanted to honor and commend them for that. So if you give these guys a round of applause, I really think that that's <laughs> just awesome stuff, right? Would you agree that you don't get this at every gym that you're a part of, right? So, you know, if you're not a member of this gym, I'm going to invite John up and he's going to tell you a little bit about how you can become a part of CrossFit. And then we're going to talk through logistics of the uh, actual challenge here. So uh, ready for lose to win. 28 day challenge starts uh, on Monday for sure. So make sure that you fill out your commitment card. You'll see that in your red folder. If you are planning to do the 28 day challenge with us, we will have communication and email support and videos and We'll give you a couple extra recipes. So we have additional resources to support those changes and support your effort. So um, we'd like to keep the conversation going with you and be able to facilitate any help that you may need. And so make sure that you turn in your commitment card to myself or Dr. Nick or Carrie um, or even John or Steven for that matter. And we'll assimilate those. We are going to develop a specific email list for this group that's participating in that 28 day challenge. So if you want to be a part of that communication, just I ask that you please just fill that out and then we know who to, to follow up with and who not to follow up with because if you don't want any more contact with us, uh, then don't fill that out and then you won't be hassled anymore with any of, any of that information. So, Okay, let's get into the actual uh, challenge here and what that looks like. There are going to be prizes. We're going to do two categories of the challenge and those are listed on page 26 in your guide. So let me just give you a second to flip to page 26 here. And so you'll see if you scroll down about halfway, there's two categories here. The first category is the highest percentage of weight loss. And so on Monday here at the gym, um, John is going to be doing uh, measurements for you guys. We will do a scale measurement as well, but then they're also going to do fat body fat percentage. So they have a, a, one of those body fat percentage sensors. So come in and get your measurements done on Monday if you are going after the weight loss part of the challenge. That way you're going to be able to track those things throughout the process. And of course, we'll redo that at the end of the 28 days and see what your improvements are and, and see where we're at with all that. The second category for prizes is going to be um, the most, it's a points challenge. And so on page 27, you're going to actually see how you could track your points. So maybe you don't need to lose weight or you're not going after a weight loss, but you'd still like to participate in the challenge and just, and, you know, just challenge yourself, challenge your physiology, see how you could do on a fat burning plan for the next 28 days. And so um, for those of you that don't have weight to lose, we still wanna be able to honor that challenge and that you know, willingness to make the changes and that effort that you're gonna put into it as well. So it's really just how, how well you follow the system. And so you'll see there, you get 10 points per day when you're following the meal plans, five points per day if you're coming in and getting your gym workouts in, um, 10 points per day if you'd be willing to, or 10 points total if you'd, if you'd be willing to um, go on on Google or whatever review site that you use and and I would ask that you would do this for CrossFit Vanquish as well but if if you found the content helpful today the process uh, valuable to you you know we, we would love to be able to help other people in our community realize the value of it as well so if you'd be willing to go and leave a five-star review for us then that really helps us out with building more social credibility and you know they say up to you know 40 to 50 percent of people will go online first before they're gonna actually entertain going into an office. And so if you found this content valuable, please, please do that. That just helps us out a lot. And then you get points for simply answering the question, um, what was your biggest accomplishment over the past 28 days and what will you continue to improve? I would encourage you to track your current weight, your current measurements. Go ahead and set your goal if you are doing a weight loss goal and your measurements if you're doing an end loss measurement. And if you're just doing the points challenge, what's your goal for your total points? You know, what, do you, what, do you, what would you like to do? You want to get as many points as you can, which is if you chip, flip to the next page on page 28, you'll see there's a total of 445 points available. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and write out your goals and do your big why. Again, that was my challenge to you in the beginning. Make sure you have that formulated today or before the challenge actually starts. That way you can anchor back into that 
when things get tough, right? When things get tough, remember why you started. So make sure you have your, your big why. Um, and then your biggest 28-day accomplishment at the end. Uh, at the end of the 28 days, we're going to ask that then you just, you know, cut that sheet out. That's your tracking sheet and your, with your points and the information filled out on the back. And you'll just turn that in here at the gym. And we'll be able to calculate all the points and we're, we'll announce our winner on the website and we'll get the, the prizes to the appropriate party. So um, we're going to have two available prizes. So you're, if you're a weight loss winner or a points winner, um, then you get to pick from one, or two, one of two prizes. Number one would be a, a free month membership if you're already, or a free month of uh, classes if you're already a member here at CrossFit. And the other will be a $100 product gift card for my office. So you'd be welcome to spend that on any of the, any of the supplements or products or anything else that we care uh, that we carry in our office. Um, and so those are the two prizes we're going to allow you to pick if you're a winner in either one of those two categories. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, other than that, uh, I just got a couple other logistical things for you. Uh, a couple action steps. Make sure that you get your measurements done if you're going to be doing the fat loss challenge, the fat body fat percentage. And uh, those can be done on Monday here at the gym. Get your resources. If you need any resources today, the orange sheet that's in your file, just make sure that that's filled out completely. And Carrie will help you do that. She's got a computer over there. She could check you out on that. Um, we do have a limited supply, but if you want more resources than what we have today, then we'll just make those available for you to be able to pick up at one of our office locations. Make sure you set your goals, turn in your commitment card, and then don't forget to track your progress. I do have people that forget to do that. They get gung-ho about the 28-day challenge and they just frankly forget to check off the boxes. Um, upcoming events, if you want further support or just like the, the community and want to get plugged into the culture that we've created, um, or if you know somebody that really needed to be here today or needs to get plugged into a healthy community or culture, um, we have a special event that we do on May 2nd called our community dinner. And literally, you know, our, our doctors and our team, we've just decided that we care so much about people that we're not above buying them a meal and bribing them to kind of understand what it is we do to help people in the community. So if you know somebody that needs to get their life, you know, turned around and their health work, you know, need to get, need to work on their health. If they need to get well, they're struggling with some issues, uh, send them out to our community dinner at home grill. And there's more information for that on the website, which you'll find listed in your guide. Uh, another workshop that we have coming up is our pure detox workshop. So we're just like with Dr. Nick's focused mostly on nutrition today. This one's going to be all about essential number five, which is our minimizing toxins essential. So we're going to teach you where the most common exposures to toxins are, which mostly actually come from our home environment. So soap, shampoos, laundry detergents, um, you know, deodorants, all that kind of stuff. There's an accumulation of toxicity that happens that we all need to really be aware of because that does impact the way that your body functions and the way your, your health will play out long term. So if you want more information on that, that is this week. So that's already Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We have three different offerings for that particular workshop. Again, you could go to the website and get more information for those as well. They're also listed here in your guide. Winners will be announced online. Um, again, the website's maxhealthchiro.com. Uh, that's all that I have for you specifically as far as the challenge. Let me bring John up here to uh, talk a little bit about the gym and CrossFit, and we'll just kind of tie things up and let you guys go. Yeah. Round of applause for you guys. Uh, I just wanted to wrap up quickly a couple of things that I forgot to mention earlier, and uh, I just wanted to kind of give everyone a sense of what we do here for everybody that's new and hasn't been here before. Um, number one, I've known Matt for a couple of years. Um, I've been to his office, I've gone through the protocol, he's given me x-rays, done the scan, the nerve scan, and it's, it's made a big difference. I've never been super unhealthy, I've never been very overweight, but I do CrossFit all the time. We get injuries and nagging little things that hurt that shouldn't hurt, and uh, when I went to see Matt, I had a big problem. I had some serious pain in my neck, I couldn't turn my head the way it was supposed to work. And it all stemmed from incorrect posture and positioning of my spine. So I can speak from experience, excuse me, that it does make a big difference. Even if you don't have weight to lose, even if you feel pretty good, you can still end up with 
issues if you consistently, like my particular problem is doing this all the time, and who doesn't do this when they're sitting at their computer all day, right? So um, just having that knowledge and that information can make such a big difference in the way that you do things every day, just like the nutrition stuff. If you have the knowledge, you really don't have any excuse anymore, right? It's putting it into practice, and that's the hard part. It, you know, it's, it's really simple, right? Like, there's a lot of information, but it really comes down to a couple of basic principles, and you can make a huge difference in your life. And for those of you that already are coming here, work out, spend a lot of time trying to make yourself better. Um, you know, if you feel like you're hitting a plateau or you can't quite get where you want to get, Something like this can make all the difference in the world. You put that together with the other four essentials, you know, you already have the fitness component and your life can be exponentially more fulfilling for such a longer period of time than I think what most Americans think of. You know, you get to 60, 70 and you start to slow down and not do as many things as you used to and it's really not necessary if you do all of these things and put these principles into practice. So, um, like I said, I really wanted to just say, we've all done this. Matt's really knowledgeable. He knows what he's talking about. Um, so any questions, Matt and Dr. Nick for that matter, um, be sure to ask them. If you have any questions on CrossFit, like I said, we do high intensity workouts. You might have seen us on TV, um, newspapers, magazine articles. It's really not that bad. Um, we start from the very basic uh, movements that we do, teach you how to move correctly, and we have a, spe a special class for beginners that we have everybody go through um, in order to get that foundation set. So if you, if you don't work out now or you do something else and you're interested, um, feel free to talk to me, Steve, anybody that looks like they were working out this morning, be happy to answer any questions. Um, but it really does make a big difference. Like Matt said, it's one of the five main components. So if you do everything else, but, and you do it perfect, but you don't work out and use your body the way it's designed, then you're missing a huge, that's 20% of, of that puzzle. Yeah, and just so, real quick, because you're, you're never too old for that either. Stan and Judy just kind of wave at everybody. Yeah, these are these are CrossFitters right here. So they they started last year when we did a, a makeover challenge with John in the gym last May, and um, you know have fought their way through even a couple injuries and things like that, but are back full speed now in CrossFit and they're doing awesome. I'm super proud of these guys. They've been patients for like five years in the office and just really incredible stuff. So don't be afraid, John and Steve and the guys that coach here are amazing, right, at helping you modify things. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, they do a really good job. These guys have been super pleased. So I just want to put that little shameless plug I, in. I think that's a well. big thing, too, is you scale to your level. You don't have to feel like you're one of the going at it like the elite athletes that you see. You're scaling down to where your, your, your comfort level is at. Yeah, we always say the athletic needs of Olympic athletes and grandparents are the same as far as the actual protocol, the movements, the intensity levels, the number of reps, the weight that you're doing, that's what changes, that's what we scale. But being able to do a squat and sit down in your chair and stand back up functionally without hurting yourself or needing help, that's something that everybody should be able to do. I don't care how old you are. You shouldn't have to get help sitting up, standing down, picking something up off the ground like a grandchild or groceries or whatever. So. Those are the things that we really focus on. And of course, we have re really good athletes that do crazy stuff, but that's not the majority of us. The majority are just average people that want to get better and be better and have a more fulfilling life because they're able to do those basic things every day um, without injury or pain. So that's CrossFit. Uh, the other thing I wanted to shameless plug on just everything that we've talked about today, um, you can talk to any of us that have been doing this for a while. I've been doing CrossFit for six years, and this diet, though I, don't, I haven't done specifically the ketogenic diet, I can tell you that I eat tons of fat. I eat almonds and avocados and peanut butter nonstop, 
and I, you, I don't have any trouble. This is true. You don't have to gain weight when you eat fat. There's a lot of other things that are involved. So you, and if you do something like what we do with CrossFit, you need that fuel, you need that energy to be able to perform and get the benefits of what we do here. <clears throat> so um, highly recommend this for everybody that does CrossFit and hasn't heard of this before. Um, and everybody else, you put the two together and you have a highly potent combination. So I just want to thank Dr. Matt and Dr. Nick again uh, for coming out. We really believe that fitness and nutrition together are key components. You can't do one without the other. You won't get the full benefits of the one without the other. So um, with that, thank you all for coming. Any questions, let us know. We're here to help. Other than that, have a great weekend. Go enjoy